for the sign of Aries hello and welcome to my channel so Aries in the recent past we have religious factors and this card says your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path and religious factors is paired with valor and on the flip side it says be courageous the unmistakable touch of grace will follow us wherever we go so in the recent past for some of you areas you had to be strong you had to be courageous because you kind of like walked a different path than your peers or uh, maybe a lot of people that you hung around or you were just on a different path you were more spiritually grounded than um, a lot of people that you knew. Your religious, it played a large part in how you lived your life and your dating and your love life. So there were things that you could and could not do or things that you tried to stay away from because you had boundaries you had uh, you wanted to follow your spiritual you want to stay on your spiritual track put it that way you didn't want to fall off of your religious beliefs maybe so you you had uh, boundaries so you need with this you needed to be uh, really strong and courageous that's what valor is all about and as long as you knew that you kept that strength the touch of grace would have followed you wherever you went so uh, valor and religious factors they played a large part in the recent past for a lot of you Aries so I'm picking up that we have a lot of spiritual probably religious people listening in today which is good so that's for the recent past for some of you Aries now let's move on over why don't we take a look at the present time we have the lovers card and we also have the Queen of Swords now the lovers card it's associated with the astrological side of Gemini the twins it's possible when this card appears in a reading as it is that you'll be feeling really ambivalent about a relationship or a situation in your life towards the end of March. It could be that your heart is telling you one thing and your head is telling you another. Basically, when you get the lover's card, the thing to do within your bounds and morality is to follow your heart. Some people say that there are only two modes that any of us operate under at a time, and that's either fear or love. So it's showing that when you get the lover's card it's safe to choose love when love when the lover's card talks about love and relationships it usually means this is the time that um, is likely to bring love in big bold capital letters to the center stage of your life this is either a new relationship or it could be a powerful return, rebonding of an ex, of an old one. Uh, either way, you'll, you're going to be really happy about how romance is going. And others will notice that you're glowing. This is serious stuff when you get the lover's card. It could mean in a new relationship where you're meeting each other's family and talking about forever again remember to share your joy around those who need it life is gonna feel really blissful to you towards the end of March could be towards beginning of April but the lovers card is very it's a very beautiful beautiful experience it's paired with the Queen of Swords now the Queen of Swords it can point to a woman in your life um, this can be a woman she's not to be trifled with 
She carries her sword really strong and proud. Just like you see, just like you see in the picture. This person, she could have hair on the dark end of the spectrum, dark hair, dark eyes. But it could go either way. It, keep in mind, if this is not a person coming towards you or a person in your life, it's pointing to you. Having a need to be forceful and honest in some situation just to get your needs met. You probably will be feeling like you need to put your foot down. The Queen of Swords, it indicates that your instincts are going to be serving you really well, really well. You already know what it is that you, you already know what it is that you need. So you're just going to have to go after it. Like I said, this Queen of Swords, it's about a very forceful energy. And a lot of people will find you abrasive if this is you. Now, when the Queen of Swords talks about love and relationships, when it comes to love, the only caution is to beware of the impulse to be too forceful. You probably heard the saying that you get more bees with honey than you will with vinegar. Well, there is some truth to this. Also, you can look at the Queen of Swords as maybe a mother or a mother-like figure that wants to interfere in your relationship, uh, whether she means to or not. So you might have to figure out where your boundaries lie with this person and let her know. So that's another example of the Queen of Swords. So Aries, for your present time, lovers and Queen of Swords, um, you got a great love that's coming up or you're in a relationship and it's just going to start to feel really wonderful if you're already in one it's going to feel like a coming together a union a partnership a deep love the strength of two or you're going to be fall you're going to start to fall in love or you, or if you know this love thing never happens for you you're going to find that you're going to have some type of good opportunity coming towards coming to you coming toward you by the end of the month in april the lovers card is really big really big um but you're gonna have someone that's trying to stop this somebody that's just don't want to see it happen for you this good opportunity or this falling in love situation somebody is going to try to interfere Somebody, somebody doesn't want to see you happy. So you got to look out for that and be careful about who you let into your, your world. Don't tell people everything. Because everyone may not be as happy for you as you are. So just take that as a warning, this Queen of Swords. So that's for your present time. Now let's take a look at the person you're dealing with, how they see you. They see you as a seven of swords and they also see you as a, as a four of swords. Seven of swords. You all probably know about this card. A lot of people call it the stalker's card. It can point to someone who's behaving with less than ethical intentions. It can mean prying into someone's life where you don't belong. If you sense that someone is spying on you, Aries, you, you're probably right. And if you're tempted to dig through someone else's life, unless it's that of your minor child who has given you cause for concern, you might want to resist the impulse. Because we all know that everyone deserves privacy. When the Seven of Swords talks about love and relationships, if you're committed, it's a clear message that trust is crucial. And if you're feeling suspicious for some reason about your partner, you're going to have to make a point to talk. Talk about it even if it's difficult. Because if you try to, if you think being passive aggressive is, well, if you think passive aggressive works, 
Uh, just know it doesn't. It's only going to make things worse. And if there's some single Aries out there listening, and you get the Seven of Swords, and you're looking for love or a relationship, you could meet someone towards the end of this month. And this person will be very interesting. Very interesting. But you need to try to avoid appearing as though you're not interested in a relationship. Because prospective suitors, they will move on to someone who's more engaging. So strive for balance. So, this is how your person is seeing you, like the Seven of Swords. They see you as possibly um, using some type of strategy, strategy in this connection, being manipulative, maybe playing some type of game, playing games in this connection, uh, possibly spying or stalking, stalking them. You wait until they go to bed at night and check their phones. Maybe they know you're doing this, Aries, is that you? Something sneaky, okay? That's how they see you. And they also see you as this Four of Swords. Now, the Four of Swords, when it comes to love and relationships, you're probably feeling disconnected. So just know that if you do start to feel this way, it's important to let your partner know what's going on inside. Just remember that your feelings, they're your own. So it's not necessarily their job to try to make you feel fabulous and great all the time. It may be that you simply need some time apart. So don't hesitate to take it. And if you're looking for love, now is probably not the time to push. You'd probably be better off getting very, very specific about exactly what you're looking for in a relationship. Because there will come a time when you will meet someone, and that time is probably not now. Not now with the Four of Swords. But there will come a day. So... This is also how your person is seeing you, like this Four of Swords. Uh, they see that you need probably some type of rest and renewal after some type of struggle. Um, maybe you two had a fight, and now you feel like you want to withdraw. So maybe they found out you were using some type of uh, manipulation or... They feel like there were too many games in this in this connection. They found out about it and or you found out about it and someone needs some type of with someone wants to withdraw. It feels like they just need some type of uh, break. But just remember if they do withdraw or decide to, it's not permanent. Now with the Four of Swords, they're coming back. It's just like a retreat. Uh, just for renewal. And this is how they see you needing some type of rest after maybe a fight in this connection. And like I said, they do see you as possibly using some, uh, some tactics. So there's some trust issues there with the Seven of Swords. Brings trust issues. Now you need to. Uh, you need a break. They see you needing a break. Uh, because you. Something about you're not really trusting this connection. So you've been using some type of game or strategy. So they see you. Like I said, needing a break, wanting to withdraw. But it's not permanent. Not when you get the Four of Swords. So, once again, that's how they see you. Now let's take a look at how you see them. You see them as the Eight of Wands and the Hangman. Now the Eight of Wands, a lot of things could be up in the air. Could be up in the air, okay? And um, you're going to probably feel frustrated, tired of waiting. But when you get the Eight of Wands, 
it's an indicator that you're going to have to be, be patient a while longer. Um, you may already have done all that you can do. Decisions now must be made by other people. When you get this card in the reading, nothing seems to be moving ahead. So don't try to force things. Don't try to force anything. It's likely to backfire on you if you try to force. So just know that sometimes our actions, they're all in the wrists. And all you can do is put your best out there and see where it lands. You put your best out there, now you just have to wait. Okay, so when the Eight of Wands talks about love and relationships, you're probably feeling ready for a commitment that doesn't seem to be coming in. Again, you cannot push someone before they're ready. You cannot get your needs met by force. So try to distract yourself if necessary and your person, your lover, they may be back to you before you know it, offering you the love you've been hoping for on a silver platter. So this is how you see your person. You see that they um, may have something that they want to say or do really fast, but it's just, it's just not happening yet. You see them wanting to um, probably communicate, talk to you about something. Uh, there's something that they want out of this connection, but it's, it's not happening fast enough. So you see them as just waiting for something to happen, but it's just not coming in as fast as they would like for it to. So you see them as impatiently waiting. That's that's the word. There you see them as impatiently waiting for something. I don't know, maybe waiting for you to pop the question, waiting for you to to come around to something. Who knows what it is? You would know that. But they are being really impatient and they're tired of waiting. And that's how you see them. Now you also see them as a hangman. Now the hangman is about letting go. For example, letting go of an unattainable lover, it brings about the possibility that someone that you can be with will be there for you. But that's only one example. You may need to let go of a particular kind of relationship as being the only way you can be happy. And if you're in a relationship and you get this hangman, that relationship could be at a crossroads. And if you think the relationship is fabulous, you're going to need to make sure to find out where your partner's head is. Because the crossroads, like I said, it's about being, I mean, the hangman is about being in a crossroads. Kind of like with two options, in or out, up or down, yes or no. Uh, you could find yourself wanting to do something, but having no idea what it is or how to do it. So, you may need to let go of attempts to control life situations, things, people. So, this is how you also see your person. At a crossroads, needing to let go uh, maybe of a particular vision that they have stuck in their head of how something should be or how this relationship should be. Um, let go of something. Maybe they need to let that go so that they're not confused. You see them as confused and just waiting on something to happen and they're tired of waiting. So they're stuck in their head and they're frustrated of waiting. So this confusion is causing them to feel like they, they need to let something go or keep it or go in or out, up or down, yes or no. They're confused. You see them as confused. 
and they're just tired of waiting on something dealing with this connection. Once again, that's how you see them, the Eight of Wands and the Hangman. And let's talk about why it's happening. It's happening due to the Four of Cups and King of Swords. Now the Four of Cups is about wishful thinking. It warns us to remember to pay attention to what is now, count your blessings we each currently experience, and not to worry too much about what could be. Because it's really easy to overlook what we already have in pursuit of what we don't have. So make sure that you remember, Aries, to count your blessings. Don't spend too much time in self-pity or wishing your life away. Because a lot of life has to do with where we put our focus. So put your focus on things and people in your life that you have to be thankful for. When this um, Four of Cups talks about love and relationships, you just basically need to look really hard at yourself as to whether you're being realistic when it comes to love. So just ask yourself a lot of questions, basically, with the Four of Cups about the connection. And this is one of the reasons why it's happening. You or your person is doing a lot of wishful thinking. Kind of like forgetting to count your blessings in this connection. Maybe forgetting the good things and just focusing on the bad things that are in this connection. That's what somebody is doing. So that's why we got... Someone is stuck in their head down there. They're forgetting about the good things and just, yeah. And it could be, that's why they're waiting on, they're waiting to get stuck out of their head. But it's not happening fast enough. And they're forgetting to remember the good things that are in this relationship. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why it's happening. And it's also happening because of this King of Swords. And the King of Swords can mean, it's about a strong, forceful, opinionated man who could be part of this scenario. If this man is your partner, it means that you probably have to accept him as he is, whether he's a male or female. You'll best deal with this type of person by drawing on your feminine aspects of your nature. Pull out your feminine side. But make sure you don't put up with being mistreated. Because when you get the King of Swords, this is a type that can be stereotypically manly and overstepping his bounds. Yeah, the King of Swords, they consider this card the narcissist card. They usually use their head over their heart. They're very forceful type of people. So, this is another reason why it's happening. You got someone in this connection that's, that's not being grateful for maybe the little things that are so sweet in this connection. And then you got someone that's uh, probably a bit arrogant. Very forceful. And so, therefore, you got someone... Uh, stuck in their head with this hangman and they're confused and they're probably waiting for things to change but it's just not happening fast enough that's why you have the eight of wands in the air and then they see you Aries as, as um, using some strategy manipulation maybe spying and um so that's causing this uh, Four of Swords with the anxiety down there, some anxiety, or needing some rest after some type of struggle. So there's a lot of um, mixed feelings in this in this reading on 
both sides. Somebody's turned upside down. Somebody's stalking. <laughs> and somebody can't wait for things to change. It's just not happening fast enough. So, and then you got the narcissist here who's pretty arrogant. And somebody's just wishing, wishing, you know, things would change, but it's not happening fast enough. Well, for the present time, we did have the Lover's card, which is really, really beautiful. There's a lot of love either coming in or this connection could turn around with this Lover's card. And you two will fall in love again, or it will feel like it towards April, or pretty soon, because the Lover's is powerful. So, but there's someone that's going to want to come in and stop it with his Queen of Swords as we talked about. So you got a few things to look out for coming towards the end of March, Aries. I wish you luck with that. It sounds like uh, a tug of war going on here. Thank God for the lovers card there in the present time. Someone's bringing you a lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of love.